pencil of graphite because I like the way I can shape. So then she said, you know, and then and then say in a still life you have a light on it, and that light's coming from a certain direction. Very simply, she made me think without even knowing yet. She said, well, what's going to happen on the inside of that bowl if that light's coming that way? I just stare at it, you know, and realize, well, it's going to hit the strongest over here, and there's going to be a shadow over here. She said, put that shadow. Quick! Don't worry about. Don't worry about the edges or being careful. She said, lay a stick or or, or even use your pencil and shade like this or however you like to shade. She said, put that. Just establish the light and shadows really quick. So look how fast you can do that with a middle value. I can go way darker than that, and I can get way lighter than that too. The, the white of the paper anyway is going to be the lightest light. And so I've established that really fast. She said, what's going to happen on the outside? And I said, well, it's going to hit the strongest here then, because it's round, and the shadow is going to be over here. Establish it quick. We're going to do the same thing on the figure here in a bit. So I, I take a brush. If you're working in paint, it might be an inch thick. You might just mix it up and just establish, you know, the light side and the shadow side real quick. That <laughs> bowl's going to have a cast shadow. If that's coming that way, then the bowl itself is going to cast a shadow out on the surface. She said, put it in, middle value, really quick. Don't stick in the lines. Let the middle value go in here on the shadow and back out to the surface again without even stopping on the lines. If you're a watercolorist, you want to put some background in and let it run right through your drawing of the face or whatever and, 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 and save those lights. You don't want to go over those lights with that transparent watercolor. you got to save those. That's the trick there. But... But don't, but don't stop on the, the edge. Let it go on through. That's what's so nice about the water is it sort of flows. And um, that way the paintings don't look cut out and pasted on. There isn't uh, an edge. There isn't an edge. So then you have those darker darks. You know, you have to get that gradation from darkest darks to the lightest lights. And so you think, well, if the light's hitting the strongest over here, the darker dark. Save pure black for small little details. And if you're painting, mix the black instead of a two black. Because a two black is a very dead black. But if you mix it using maybe dark burnt umber and dark ultramarine blue, you can let more brown show through and very little water. Or, you know, uh, if you're working in watercolor, or just real pure thick dark ultramarine blue and burnt umber will make a beautiful black. And you can let more brown show through for a brownish black or more blue show through the mixture for a bluish black. You also have a lizard and crimson and a, a phthalo green. I love phthalo green. You have to be careful with phthalo green in it. So bright. And a lizard. You get those on anything and it's over. You know, that I have it on my rug and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I wear my paint shirt today just because. <laughs> just but, but, but those are very dark colors. You, you, you sometimes have colors right out of the tube that are the value you and then when you mix the black, it's, it's alive instead of a dead tube black. So save those pure blacks and pure white for glints, little tiny little details, or the darkest darks, maybe where the skin goes into the hair, you know, usually up by the spotlight on the figure or the sunlight coming down. You'll see some areas where where will be pure black. You want a colorful black, but it will be small areas, so it doesn't take over. So I'm going right next to black, but not pure black, and I realized that that would be on the inside here, just, uh, just on, under the, on the edge of the rim, really. And so I'm going to use my medium and put that in almost next to black, not pure black, but next to black. And then I can darken the middle I have in there, almost that dark, but not quite. Then I have the value that I already put in. I established that thing with a middle value. It was already there. And then I'm barely taking off the glare of the paper when I get over here to the light side of the inside of the cup. And she said, there's something else that happens that you just need to know. This is all you need to know. I swear, this is all you need to know. This, this little thing just started me off, and I just never stopped for years. <laughs> and I'm probably never going to because it's so much fun. Anyway, you understand that light comes down and hits the surface out here, and it bounces back up onto the shadow side of the outside of the cup. And it creates this thing called reflected light. And if you're in working in watercolor or in oils or in soft pastels or a color medium, 
it's reflected color even. So, you know, when the, the light comes down outside and hits the purple shirt that the child has on, uh, it's going to put purple color up into the shadows on her face, which is happening in that painting right there. That's all the blues and the purples. And, and so you can reflect these colors in the shadows on the subject. And she said, and, and so to show some light reflected on the dark side, she says, you don't have to put the dark right on the edge like we did up here. You can put the dark kind of right in from the edge, and that saves that reflected light. So, and she said, you know, think in terms of cylinders, too. Everything's round. So when she put in this next to black, not, not black, but my next to darkest dark, we put it in at sort of a, 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 a oh, an arch, you know, a, an um, a, arc. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just wasn't coming out. Yeah, a, an arc there. And, and that gives that, you know, the idea that that is not a flat thing. It's coming around like this. And I have saved some middle value on the edge. So I've got to have that next to dark. So I'm darkening that middle I already had on there. Then I have the middle I already had on there. Then I'm barely taking off the glare of that white paper again until I'm saving the light for the light side. And you get that gradual gradation. Uh, even on the cast shadow down here is going to have an area that's got its darkest darks, and that's going to be right up here uh, down the base of the, the cup. And so, so because I let that middle value go through everything, I can still define the shape of the cup or the bowl by putting this next dark dark, not, not on my reflected light there, but right up close to the base. And then again, you need that gradual gradation from your darkest dark to your lightest light. So I'm putting that in my next to dark right there. Then the middle I had on. And then again, I'm barely taking off the glare of the paper as I get out to here where the light is hitting the strongest. Look what's happening. And, and it's just, just with some really quick you know, shading and understanding what's going on with the shadows and the light. And then you can also use the negative space. What we're doing here is we're creating contrast. We're trying to make things, um, you know, pop. And so what happens is, is wherever you have a light, you're going to have a dark next to it. And, and you, can, you can vary those lights and darknesses to keep it soft and to, and to keep it real. So I've been calling this a bowl sometimes, and I've been calling it a cup sometimes. Let's make it a cup. And, and there's another little thing that happens in art. You can define part of something and then leave part of it completely undone almost. Not, not completely, but more undone. And the viewer, who's not the artist, the viewer's eye sort of magically makes things more real for you. So instead of again, putting an outline around a handle on a cup, I might just go to the negative space and put some value behind the handle in the cup or through the window in the middle of the handle in the cup. And I'm just doing it with some shading. Here I'm thinking negative space. And here I can have it darker because I'm, I, I, I haven't got anything behind it. As I get over the middle of my... Um, I'm trying to stay out of the way here. I've learned to do around the corner drawings <laughs> like this because <laughs> when you're doing demonstrations, invariably you're in the way, you know, and you just can't can't help that. But <laughs> I got a nice pole I can hang on to here. Which is <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> I wish I had one of those because it's tough. But anyway, I can I can put this value behind. The, the cup, and I haven't, or behind the handle, and I haven't even touched the handle here. Your eye just put a handle in there for me. And, and, and what I'm doing is I'm getting lighter over the dark side of the inside of my cup there, but I can get really dark 